All right, let's go out to Reno, Nevada and talk to, is it Lila? Lila. Lila. What's up, Lila? Hi, how are you doing, doctor? We are partying. How about you? Um, I'm okay. Kind of like nervous. Can't believe I'm on the show. Oh, don't be nervous at all. The show's not even that great. What's up? So, um, I, I kind of like had a question. Um, maybe, uh, hopefully you can help me figure it out how to kind of like control my feelings. Um, I get, um, I feel like down easy. Like if, if I text someone and they don't text me back, I like, I start imagining the wars. Um, and I start shopping stuff randomly. Like whenever I feel like I'm not good enough, I start buying stuff randomly. It's not extremely like thousands of dollars, but I don't like it. Like I buy stuff that I don't need. And then I'm like, I shouldn't buy it. Why did I buy it? And then I start like, um, kind of like making me feel even worse because like I'm spending money that there's no need. And so I like, I start feeling down and then I don't know. Yeah, you get, you almost get into that shame cycle, right? Where you buy something that yeah. you know you don't need, but it makes you feel a little bit better. And then you feel guilty that you bought it. And then you feel ashamed when it shows up. And then you get low. And the only way to make you feel better is that you think is you go buy something else and the whole thing starts exactly. over again. Yeah. So it's, it's like a circle and it, it yeah. never gets to the point to feel good. Sure. And I'm like, it's like I, I listen a lot to your show and a lot of shows like, um, you know, to self-improvement or minimalist and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know I don't need this. But so, at the moment, I feel like, oh, this is what's going to make me happy. But I know it doesn't. Yeah, well, I'm really, really grateful that you called. That means a lot. Um, let's back out a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk more about feeling low. How long have you felt low? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's not all the time. Um, and that's another thing that I feel ashamed of. I'm, I'm married and my husband is amazing. He knows all this. Like I, I, I can talk to him about this kind of stuff and he's always there for me. Um, so I, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. My, hey, okay. You, you, I need you to hear me say this. It's okay if you, if you get down and it's okay to feel anxious. You're not, there's not something wrong with you. You're not broken. It doesn't mean you're a bad wife. It doesn't mean you don't love your husband. It doesn't mean your husband's not great. Here's the deal. It just simply means your body's trying to get your attention for some reason. And what we want to do is we want to get to, what's my body trying to tell me? And you hear how there's no shame in that. There's no guilt in that. It's just pure curiosity. I wonder, I wonder why that. I wonder why that is. And I would wonder, do you have some girlfriends in your life, some women in your life that you go do things with, that you hang out with? Or are you, are, yeah. are you lonely? No, 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 I do. Tell me about them. Um, they're they're great. Like, uh, I'm not I'm not the one though that if I had a problem, I call. I usually I just talk to my husband. Um, but we hang out like often, like at least we had different friends, like you know, work and outside of work and stuff like that. So do you have little ones. I hang out. With, I'm sorry. Do you have kids. Do you have little ones. Uh, yeah, one. Tell me about him. Um, she's she's good. She's great. You know, she's a kid. She have a uh, her moments. <laughs> the the patience. It's a little bit push, yeah. but she's a great kid. That's she awesome. um she had a good hour. So I remember it was a huge moment for me when I started tracking backwards. For me, I think I've talked about this on the show all the time. Um, I don't have a lot of impulse shopping sometimes, um, but not usually. Usually my issue is I go to junk food. I go to, go to trash, like unhealthy food. And it was such a revelation to me when I realized that almost every time I go, I'm either super exhausted and there's a lot of real clear literature that suggests the more tired you are, the more hungry and the, and the poorer the food choices you make. Almost always there was some sort of relational issue. I was frustrated with my wife. My kids were driving me crazy. I was super annoyed with somebody at work and I found myself mindlessly grabbing junk food. And I'm sure I could go down a rabbit hole and figure out the physiology. I didn't really care what the physiology was. I just needed to know that the trigger had something to do with when my body felt exposed or lonely or disconnected from folks. So going along those same lines, I would ask you, the times you can think back to when you have 
felt the need to sit down and impulse shop to buy something. What usually starts that domino, hits that first domino that just rolls the rest of them down? Um, if I can, like, if I like think about it, it's usually, um, either, yeah, I'm stressed at work or I had an argument with my husband or with my kid, or I feel like, and I don't know why, like, I feel like if, if I had a friend and, and, I, and I text, you know, and it's, I know everyone's busy, everyone had their life, but in my head, it's like, if they don't text me within a few hours, I was like, oh, are they mad at me? Did I, did anything? Did I? And I'm like, and I keep going, like, I don't remember saying or doing anything, but I'm like, oh, but maybe I did and I didn't realize. And then that's when I feel like the anxiety. And then I'm like, I just got online and I start just looking random things to try to distract my mind. And then I end buying things that I don't need. And I just, you know, they look good. This look cool. I can do this with this. Yeah. Oh, of course. So, I mean, you, man, you could talk yourself into rationalizing any of those things in the moment, right? So I want to back out and give you six six categories I want you to look at in your life, okay? And um, you don't have to write these down because they'll be available when the show comes out. But um, the six categories I would line out for you is the first thing I would sit down and I would ask you to choose reality, to, to like really be honest about the reality of several situations. Okay. And you, for any number of reasons, and I'm sure you and I could talk for a long, 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 long time. But you have in your disposition that you're going to make sure everybody sees a beautiful picture, even if things are really hard behind that picture. Is that true? Yes. Yes. I have a feeling that if your husband was really mean to you one day, nobody would ever, ever, ever know. Or if you were really, really exhausted and frustrated with your kid, no one would ever, ever know. Because you have become so gifted over the course of time, probably to, to, because you had to, at smiling and saying, oh, sure, it's fine. Everything's fine. Because you don't want to be a burden to anybody. And so I'd ask you to look at reality. Like, what is the state of your marriage for real? What's the state of your workplace for real? What's your state of your friendships for real? Being a parent, your relationship with your parents. I want you to... Look at the landscape of the relationships in your life. That's number one. And your workplace, all that stuff. Number two is I want you to begin to choose freedom, to look for places where other people are deciding what you do. That might be if you owe money to somebody. That might be in-laws that are making demands of you. That might be a calendar that is super full and out of control. That might be uh, any number of things that are other people are demanding of you and you don't get to drive in the driver's seat of your own life. The third one is connection. We talked about that earlier about relationships. You might be great on that one. Awesome. The fourth one is mindfulness and we'll, we'll get there in a second. Really mindfulness is simply the gap between um, that feeling I want to do this thing and actually doing it. Mindfulness is I'm, I'm having this thought but I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go through with it. Right. And then the next one is belief. This idea that you've got to have something anchored into something bigger than you are. Do you have a faith, do you have a faith belief system of any kind? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of, I'm not a hundred percent practice, but yeah. I That's just, okay. I, yeah. I'm not going to prescribe one to you. I'm just going to say you have to have some sense that I am not alone in the universe. I'm not, I'm not a balloon that somebody cut the string and I'm just floating off aimlessly all by myself because that body is going to always be anxious because it's going to be untethered no matter how, how good it is. And the last one is you got to choose health and healing. That might be sleep. That might be going to counseling for the first time and dealing with some childhood trauma. That might be um, any number of, I got to deal with this nagging knee injury or back injury. I just got to, I got to get well and whole. I got to quit drinking 45 energy drinks in the morning before I go to work or whatever the thing is. Here's what, here's the picture I want you to have. If your life is a cup and it's already filled to the brim with all these things I just talked about, your body's lonely. you got a chaotic schedule. you got a bunch of demands all over uh, on you all the time. Your relationships aren't solid. You're untethered. You're not well. 
then when something happens, like your boss hollers at you or somebody cuts you off in traffic or your husband is snaps at you, there's no, there's no place for that extra water to go when it gets poured into the glass and it just spills over everywhere. But if you keep the water in that glass really low, then when life happens, when somebody pours water in it, it's got plenty of space to absorb that water, to, to, to capture that water, right? And so more practically speaking, how serious are you about stopping impulse shopping? How seriously do you just want to quit? 100%. Like every time I bought something, I always like, and I look and I, I, I feel it's got better. Um, I used to like almost every month buy shoes, clothes, this, that. And now like, I feel like, okay, it's been months now. But there's days that it's just... I look at it and I said no, and then I go back to the website, and then I go back to the website, and I keep like, no, I don't need it, and then eventually I can buy it. So I would tell you, you're going to have to do what I had to do several years ago, which is I had to give my debit card to my wife. I had to take it out of my possession because I didn't control myself. I couldn't control myself. And mine was always taking people to lunch. I'll, I got it. I'll, let's go to lunch. Let's go to lunch. Let's go to lunch. I'll, get, I'll go get coffee. Let's go grab dinner. And so it wasn't shoes and shirts as much as it was, I was trying to buy connection with people because I didn't think people would want to hang out with me just to hang out. And so I had to take radical steps. I disconnected Amazon Prime. I didn't have access to it. I changed the code. I didn't have access. I couldn't get in. And I didn't have my debit card, so I couldn't just go buy things willy-nilly. I had some cash in my wallet, and that's what I used to spend. And when it was gone, it was gone. But there's some really easy steps you can take to make it to where I can't, you can't just buy stuff. The harder thing will be being very mindful. When you get the impulse to stop and pull out a small little binder, a small little notebook that you might get at like Walgreens or something like that, and just write down, what is my body trying to protect me from? What is my body trying to numb out from? And probably what you're going to find is you're having problems at work. You're exhausted. Your husband is amazing, but you could really use a lot of, a lot of work at home with the kids because you're working full-time too. It can be any number of those things in those six categories, but your body's trying to just shut the system down because the, the glass is full. You're, can't ta- you can't take any more. And it just says, hey, let's throw this thing into neutral and we're going to head off this way and just buy some stuff. Somebody else might be might be cutting. Somebody else might get another drink and another drink and another drink. Somebody else might go to pornography. Somebody else might go to any number of things that we're going to do just to numb out. And I'll tell you the same thing I tell everybody, Lila. Hey, thank you so much for calling. Um, hang on the line here. I'm going to send you a copy of my brand new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life. Um, we didn't even mean to set it up this way, but it's it's almost just a perfect handoff for you. So I'm going to send you a copy of the book. Um, but I tell everybody, you are worth not living a numbed out life. You are, you are created for more than that. You're put here on earth for more than just to band-aid over how you feel, what you wanted, what you think, what you need, and just go, you're worth more than that. Your life is worth more than that. Your marriage is worth more than that. Your time with your kids and your friends are worth more than that. Your time spent at work is worth more than that. So, Lila, I'll ask you, I'll ask everybody listening, don't settle for a numbed out life. It's worth the work to head into the storm and ask your body, what are you trying to protect me from? What are you trying to numb me out from? What are you trying to distract me from? And I got to head right into the middle of those storms because that's where the light is. That's where the healing is. Thank you so, so much for the call, Isla. I'm so, I'm so grateful that you call. I'm proud of you for calling. Um, hang on the line. We'll get you hooked up. Call anytime, anytime. Everybody, you're worth a peaceful non-anxious life.